Hello and welcome. Um, today I want to talk about the semantic model. Uh, this is something that has been integrated in OpenHAP 3 as, as a new feature. Um, it goes away from the original way of simply specifying a location for your devices um, and then grouping them like that. The semantic model goes much, much, much further. So. Um, um, the page I've opened here is the tutorial that's very worthwhile reading. Um, what they basically have done is that you can now tag um, your items with, uh, with, with, uh, with their properties. Um, so if they are a measurement, uh, if they are radiator control, if they are temperature, things like that. On top of that, you group them in locations and equipment. And the whole thing is built up as a tree. And uh, as, as a result of that, um, all these devices, so you have your, 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 your location, your house, your ground floor, your corridor, your first floor. You then have your, your device, that's, uh, that's your item, that's your thing. And then you have your item. And then they group again to all roller shutters or all batteries or all temperatures, things like that. So um, I guess we'll jump straight in. Um, this is my own OpenHub 3 uh, installation. Uh, I am still running OpenHub 2.5 um, uh, and I have a bit of a mix of configuration with OpenHub 2 uh, files most of it done the way it should be done in OpenHub 2.5 where uh, you have done it through the paper UI. Uh, but when OpenHub 3 came out, I decided to basically start from scratch um, and try to implement everything the way it was intended with all the updates in OpenHub 3. They've made so many improvements that it made totally sense to do that. So it's my front screen. Um, um, this data from my weather station, there's a image here from my uh, intercom that usually is supposed to be at the front door, it's sitting on my desk at the moment. Uh, when somebody presses the button or when there's motion, it will take a snapshot and it will show that picture here. There's a switch here for the fountain, there's a little fountain in the front yard, so um, if I turn that on, the pump starts pumping the water up the fountain. Um, and then you have locations, equipment, and properties here. And that is what the semantic model is about. So um, if I go to settings and I go to model, um, you have your locations here. So in my case, I've set up already the garage, the ground floor in the annex, the ground floor in the church, outside, the top floor in the annex, and the top floor in the church. Um, and then there is an unassigned object here, which is the temperature in the kitchen island. I don't have an assigned that. We'll start with uh, basically adding a device manually uh, to the model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into things um, and we're going to find one of the devices that I haven't added yet. Um, let's see if we take the, uh, yeah, if we take the uh, whole way back stat. So this is a thermostat um, connected via the AVM Fritzbox binding. Um, it's a Fritzbox decked, uh, as Fritz deck 301. Um, go to the channels and the things that we want is we want the current camp temperature and create as a new item. So and that is temperature whole way back uh, type that's okay uh, let's see this is a measurement this is actually where we start this is the semantic class and the semantic properties is the first bits that, that you sort of add here and this is a so was a measurement and this is temperature great so uh, we are done with that. The next one that I want is the set point temperature because we want to be able to set the temperature from our smart home appliances. 
so go in this uh, hallway back set point. That's a set point, and that is oh, my, no, I'm actually not giving this a property. So link. Okay, I want the radiator mode. Create. That is the uh, all the way back radiator mode, and I put this down as a radiator actually. Um, that's okay. We leave that like that. And then the last thing we want is the battery level because the batteries in these last about one year. Um, but it's nice to know when they go, uh, so you might not notice. So and that's um, a measurement, and I put this down as energy, and that is the battery hallway back. Link. Okay. That's the only four I'm really interested in. So when I go back to the model here, we now have all these items that I just created there in here. So uh, we go in the uh, ground floor uh, of the church um, and we create the, there's no hallway back in here yet, so we create that. So it's a, uh, Hallway back, hallway back, hallway back. Um, that's a corridor. Get some nice logos there. Location. Um, see, do we have a hallway? We have a corridor. It's gone. That's our location, and that went in the wrong place. So we remove that again. Remove. Okay. Um, I should have clicked here first, and then that location, because I want it in the ground floor of the church. So all the way back. All the way back. Okay, that's in the right place this time. So the next thing then we want to do is we want to create uh, equipment. Um, and that's uh, heating. Sorry. Hallway back heating. Heating. So that is a uh, radiator. No, not remote control, it's radiator control. Radiator control, great. That's for our set point that goes in there. So um, one thing that annoys me a bit is that it always collapses uh, the whole tree here. Grant, so we have we have that basic set up. Um, what we do now is we're going to take and we're going to set the... Uh, so the set point here, uh, we're going to edit that, edit, and that's, let's see here, that is a radiator, that's great, and then the parent group, and that's the hallway back heating, close, safe, um, and that puts, Post our set point up here. The same with the uh, radiator mode. We edit that. Parent groups. Hallway back heating. Safe. Okay. Back into the model. 
Um, we have the battery whole way back. We edit that. Edit panel groups. And that I'm putting in the whole way back. Um, I'm not putting it in the heating section. Um, you can obviously do that any way you want. Um, this is just what, what I found suited me best. Um, as you can see, uh, this is now here. And then the last one is the temperature. So we can edit parent groups. And I'm putting that also that in the whole way back. Safe. So that's what's done with those four items that I just added. So we have in the heating element, we have the set point and the radiator mode. And in the whole way back itself, we have the battery and we have the temperature. So what this now has resulted in is that if I go to the font page here again and I go to locations, it has created a whole way back ground floor church for me. Um, and it already is taking the temperature from the radiator from the thermostat and it shows it to me here as 18.5%, where you can see, for example, out in the garage, it's 6%. Uh, six, 6 degrees Celsius uh, in the attic it's uh, in, in the annex it's 11 degrees Celsius bathroom top floor church 16.5 ground floor church 16 degrees uh, and the press is absolutely boiling and same for the outside it's very hard to see now with this with this picture here but what it shows is 8.5 degrees outside and 90 percent humidity and the humidity data it has taken from my weather station. So if we click into hallway back um, and you can see here the radiator mode and the set point. If you click on properties I have the, the battery and the uh, the temperature. And that's the same for, for other places like if I take the uh, bathroom uh, in, the, in the church um, I take the bathroom in the in the top of the church, um, and we have here at the uh, at the front door, um, we have outside lights. I haven't defined them at the moment, and we have the doorbell. Uh, that's the one thing is, is your locations. The images besides um, they go in etc. Actually, I can show that. So they go in. Uh, if we go in here, so they go to etc. Open Hub HTML. Um, so I've just basically put them in there. Um, they can be any size, really. It doesn't matter. Um, Open Hub will scale them for you. Uh, to transfer them, the easiest is probably to install something like Samba on your open map box um, and then create a share so that you can just drop the pictures in. So locations is one part of the semantic model. Equipment is the other. So what it has done now automatically is it has grouped all these items. So I have all the radiator controls here in one place. Um, front door, that's that one. I have power outlets, that's a uh, little, uh, it's a Silvercrest uh, power strip that was sold in little with uh, three switchable sockets. Um, but I have multiple of them, but just added one for now. Uh, miscellaneous is the uh, uh, fountain. I can probably say that should be power outlet if I wanted. I have speakers. So I have added the Sonos sound system in the office and the living room so far. And I can control that from here. Um, lights, um, and we'll show all the lights that I added to the system. You have uh, color select here for individual lights. You have brightness, um, so whatever you add. And then I have, for example, uh, switches for um, the floodlights outside, which are on uh, decked switched sockets. And the third thing that comes from this is the properties, which is also great. So basically it groups all the light elements, it groups all the temperature elements, it groups all the energy uh, elements. So if we go into temperature, here are the temperature from each and every 
um, element that we've added so far. Um, energy. Here are all the batteries uh, from all the radiators. There's also um, uh, energy consumption from my switched uh, uh, switch sockets and also voltage from my switch sockets. Um, so these are again AVM uh, Fritz Stack uh, 200 and Fritz Stack 210. Um, they are quite nice. Uh, they only exist in Continental, but um, the good thing about them is that they can they, they have a quite high rating and they can measure uh, the power and the uh, uh, voltage and various other things. So I find them quite handy for certain bits. Um, so all the light, I had that. Um, I have other things here like rain or wind. This is from my weather station, ultraviolet um, level. I probably will put ultraviolet into level instead. Uh, pressure is the barometric pressure, all from the weather station. Um, power, again. And so basically by using the semantic model, all of this gets created automatically. And that is a vast improvement from Open Map 1 and 2. Um, also the... Uh, uh, the, the responsiveness of the interface has improved drastically because in OpenMap 2, if you went up uh, to control and then you went to a location, it would take quite a while to load initially, at least with the amount of devices that I have in my setup. And if you look at things here, um, and I'm not even done yet, I have 450 things added. Um, to the system so it's it's quite extensive anyhow i hope that gives a bit insight into the semantic model um, i can uh, show one more thing here uh, where we add uh, another device the other way around how you can do that so let me look at a thing that we can uh, we can use we could use the uh, I haven't added yet. Um, now we're going to take the kitchen stat. It's okay. So we go to the water and we go to the ground floor in the annex and we go to the kitchen dining room um, that has already the plant heaters. So then the kitchen has nothing in, in, in heating control yet. Now, this way doesn't really um, suit me most of the time, but um, we'll do it anyhow for prosperity. Um, so you go in here, sorry, that was probably a bit quick. So what, what you do is you go into your, your equipment. I had this created already. Um, and then uh, create equipment from thing. Sorry, create points from thing. Yeah, create point something. Um, you could even go and create equipment from th from thing. Um, I I just find this a bit confusing. Um, I guess we will get get used to this with, with time. Um, so I can then go and take my kitchen stat. And I can see I want the current per temperature, I want the sit point temperature, I want the radiator mode, and I want the battery level. So we go through the settings here. So that's the uh, temperature kitchen. That's a measurement. And that's a temperature. Then we have. Uh, Set point. That's a radiator. That is a set point. I'm not giving that a semantic property. Then we have the radiator mode. That's the uh, kitchen radiator mode. Again, that is a 
radiator um, I'm not setting anything on this and then we have the battery kitchen kitchen stat and that is a measurement and that is a energy so and then we say add to model and what it has done it has taken all four devices and it added to my heating and that obviously doesn't suit me um, so I will be taking the uh, battery out of here parent groups and that goes in the kitchen instead close safe and I will also be going and I take the temperature out of here I haven't quite decided yet um, how it's going to look in the end but that's initially my approach so that's the other way to do things where some people feel that this is quicker um, you you save a few steps when when you uh, when you create your smart home um, I personally don't because I have to reshuffle them again and we can again we can go up here and we can have a, in, in the locations um, we have the kitchen dining rooms 22 degrees at the moment um, it's in comfort mode um, and um, we have the voltage from the deck switch uh, the plant heaters aren't on, so there's no no consumption there. Um, it has created that. If I go to equipment um, and I say radiator controls, uh, the kitchen radiator mode and the set point are here now. They have been added. Um, if I go to um, properties and I go to temperatures, um, the temperature in the kitchen has been added here so all automatically um, and um, that works very well okay thank you for today